In this video, I'm going to briefly go over how to work with a set of data. So in this example, I'm working with a Google Sheet that I've created where this one is a record of running, um, where I recorded the miles, I recorded my mood, and scaled it on a scale from zero uh, of scale from one to five. Uh, and I recorded a smell that I might have smelled on this run. Now, what I've done here, and as you've seen on the web page, is I have published this to the web as a CSV file. So I have done file and then published a web. And inside here, I can choose just the first sheet and comma separated values. And this link is what get, gets pasted directly into my sketch at the URL at the top. Um, and so that's a static link. So if I change something in my CSV file, it'll be updated and reflected here. And notice I am storing that in a variable called URL at the very top of my sketch. And so it's a global variable, um, which means I can use it anywhere. The other option, which I've also included here, is if you do a little arrow off to the side, you'll see I've included a running.csv. I have gone to file download and comma separated values. And this will download a CSV as you see down here. And I've uploaded it to our sketch here by going to the drop down menu for sketch files. And this comes up once you hit over the triangle here and you can do upload file and then you would drag and drop it directly into here. And if it came in and it was a weird name, I can always right click and go rename. And you see it's my exact same setup that I have here. And a CSV file is one where each value is separated by a comma, but it's still organized in both rows and columns. So in some ways, this is like a two-dimensional array um, where I have uh, more than two dimensions, um, where I have multi-dimensional array, where I have um, many values going both horizontally and vertically. And there are some built-in functions to help us access each of these different elements. And I'm gonna walk through the sketch with you. So my first step here is I have created a variable called data, which is where I'm going to store my CSV in. In this part, I have created a variable called the URL where I'm storing my static URL from my spreadsheet. I'm then using a function called preload and preload is a built-in function inside p5.js, which says do this thing before all the rest of your sketch runs. And the reason we want to do that is we want to make sure our data is loaded before anything else happens. And so if you're working with a really big data set, you might see loading at the top up here. Um, and so you don't want to draw anything before your data is actually available. Inside here, inside the preload function, and see if I go here, ends up right here. Um, I am storing the table, which is a CSV file, the table of information inside my variable called data. So load table is a built-in function, which takes three arguments. The first one is our CSV file, which is coming directly from the URL. Our data type, which is a CSV. And notice this is a lowercase and there's a uh, parentheses around it. And then the last thing, this is header. And what this means is look at our spreadsheet or look at our CSV file and use this row, this very first row, where you see the words that are at the top of our columns as the way to grab each column of data. So when I say get the column for miles, it's going to put everything inside of it from this top one to this bottom one inside an array that we then can access and iterate through. Now, you'll see I've commented out this one underneath, and that's just to show you that right here, I have loaded the table in the exact same way, but instead of using the URL, I am using the running.csv file, which is uploaded to my sketch. And so this could be one that is stored either in the sketch itself, or if you download it, it could be on your server um, inside your file structure. So 
there's two different ways to, to load your data here. So once this runs, then we have function setup and I'm creating a canvas, which is 400 pixels by 400 pixels. And I'm telling this not to loop. Um, I'm telling it not to loop in this instance because I'm just drawing a simple visualization to the screen. Scrolling down here, inside function draw, I am doing a black-ish background. And then here, what I'm saying is, if data is true, so this means if there's actually stuff coming into the data, and remember data is our load table here, then run all the stuff that we want to have happen. And the reason that we're doing that is this other sort of check, right? So this is us saying like, okay, the, you know, if this isn't loaded yet, don't actually run the sketch. Inside here, we are storing the value of the row count of how many rows are in our spreadsheet inside a variable. And we're doing that because this number can change dynamically. If for some reason I copied and pasted all these down here, command C, command V, command C, command V, right? Like this was my new spreadsheet. I would want my, my um, sketch, my P5 sketch to be able to accurately update and see that. So we're storing the value of the rows inside a variable. And this is done using dot notation. So data dot, and then, or it's actually data. And then the function is dot get row count and it stores it inside here. And then we have miles where we're saying the column of miles store that information inside miles. So here we're using again dot notation in the same way that we use like mouse pressed or um, button pressed. Um, here we're saying take the variable variable of data where we've stored the table and get that column named miles. And notice that inside here, I'm spelling it in the exact same way that I have spelled it here. Capital M uh, and no other stuff behind it. So when I come back here, what I could do is we could print that to the terminal. So if I do print miles and rerun this, you'll see it stores it as an array. So all of that information is coming in 4, 3, 3, 3.5, 2, 4, 4.5, um, which is what we had here. There's a bit of a delay in if you did add something to this file. Um, that's why we didn't see those new numbers come up. It's not instantaneous. So there is a bit of a delay that happens. So we see all of these numbers here and we come back here and we see all of the same numbers being printed down here and they are inside an array. So if I wanted the first one, remember the first element inside an array is zero. So we should see four come back up just like that. So the next step is we then iterate through all of the rows. So we create a for loop where we start the index, let I index equal zero, I is less than the number of rows. So the amount of rows that were coming from the spreadsheet itself. And then each time through, go to the next row. So it goes through once and it starts at row zero and then goes to the next row and goes to the next row until we reach the last row. All I'm doing down here is I'm drawing a rectangle that has a, and it takes four variables or four arguments x, y, width, and height. And so I'm telling it to start at position 100. And then I'm using the value of i here to move down by 20 pixels each time. And so y is going to be equal to 100. And the first time this runs, i is 0. 0 times 20 is 0. So it'll be 100, 100. The second time it runs, i will be equal to 1. So this will be equal to 120 then 140, then 160, and so on. The width is changing based on the value of miles here. 
So since the amount of miles is the same as our row count, right? It should be seven. Then each time this iterates through, we're going to get that a different value of miles printing to the turn printing or not really printing, but coming here and being stored in the value of W, which is the width. And then the height is a static 10. And so when we run this, we see this on the side. And honestly, you can't really see much of what's happening here because these numbers are really, really small, right? Our numbers, if you remember, my, let's print miles, 433.524.4.5. So what we could easily do is take this W and multiply by 10. And now we see that there's actually some difference happening there. What if we multiply it by 50? Then we see even more. And so we've made this really simple sort of bar graph, right? Um, and this is where we can bring in more information based on what's in our spreadsheet. So for example, looking at our spreadsheet, I had a mood here and I had a smell. So I could say if the mood is um, a certain number, then color the uh, fill in a different color. So above this, right now, I haven't even given this a fill color. If I want to bring in a different color or that column of information, I need to create a new variable. So let mood equal data dot get column and mood with a capital M. Now you'll see that I'm using one type of parenthesis here and another here. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as they match on either end. And so I could come down and say print mood. And I get my row of numbers down here. And now I could do something like if mood, and remember I need to do the index of mood in order to get the one at that particular row, if the index of mood is equal to one, then let's fill it with, fill with red. And just to save time, if mood i, whoop, i is equal, if mood i is equal to five, and maybe I should do like an else if instead. So I should do else if. And then fill with, we'll do uh, green. So if we space this out all, all out, this is now saying if the mood that is brought in from the data set is equal to one, fill it with what? Fill it with red. If it's five, fill it with green. And then we'll do one more where it says else, let's just fill it with blue. All right, so you can see the first row was four. So that got filled with blue. Second row is five, so it's green. Third was um, three, so it's blue. First one was red because it's one, and another one was red. You could also do the same thing with let smell equal data dot get column, and let's do smell. And rather than, um, well, actually, let's just do one thing. If could do another set of it state, if statements. So if smell, and remember to use the index, is equal to, and here's where it's the same thing. If I said hoagie, let's change the height, uh, let height equal, um, let's just make it smaller. So height will equal five h equals five. And so we see a couple instances where it was a smell of hoagie. 
So now we've combined three different data sets into this one element to get something kind of interesting. Um, so th I think this is a good start for you in terms of getting ready to work with data. Um, and I think it should be pretty exciting.